The 27 cells of a 3 by 9 grid are filled in using the numbers 1 through 9, so that each row contains nine different numbers. Each of the three 3 by 3 blocks heavily outlined in the example contains nine different numbers, as in the first three rows of a Sudoku puzzle. In this problem, we're looking for the number of ways to fill in the grid. The answer form is given below. So there are a couple of observations that can simplify our computation a bit. The first is that we can actually assume without loss of generality that the first row is 1 through 9 in that order. The idea behind this is that um, each permutation of 1 through 9 is going to give the same number of uh, different ways to fill in the grid. So we can fix the first row and just multiply by 9 factorial in the end. The other observation that we can make is that once we fix the first row, and in fact, we don't even need to fix the first row for this observation. But the second observation is that the three numbers in each block's row, we don't really care too much about the ordering of those three numbers. So for example, since 379 forms a valid way with the rest of the grid, if I permute 379, such as 937, this will also give a valid way. So this means that for each of the six remaining blocks, I just need to consider which numbers go in those blocks without regards to the ordering. And then I can multiply by 3 factorial to the 6 or 6 to the 6 to account for the ordering. So with these assumptions, we can now attempt the problem. So in this picture here, um, I drew a 3 by 9 grid and labeled the rows 1 through 3, the boxes A through C. So I'm going to do a little bit of casework because we don't know what row 2 can have. The only thing we know that row 2 must obey is that the three numbers in box A, they cannot be 1, 2, 3. They have to be three of the numbers from 4 to 9. And similarly, the three numbers that are in the second box, uh, box B, they cannot be 4, 5, 6. And the third box cannot have the number 7, 8, 9. So we're going to do a little bit of casework. Our first case is that either box A or box B contains 7, 8, 9 in some order on row 2. So for example, uh, 7, 8, 9 or 798, this will be our first case. And our second case is if on row 2, the numbers 789 are not evenly distributed, or if they're not distributed in either box A or box B. Let's say box A contained two of them and box B contained one of 789, or vice versa. So. Case two is going to be that on row two, um, one of box A or box B contains uh, two of the numbers 789. And the other box A or B contains one of them. So these are going to be our two main cases that we're going to consider. 
Now we're going to start with case one, where one of box A or box B contains seven, eight, nine in some order on row two. Now this is actually the simplest case. So case one is actually the simplest case. The reason why is because once we know that either box A or box B contains seven, eight, nine, this is going to uniquely determine the numbers in row two for the other boxes. For example, if we know that box B contains 789 in some order. This means that box A has to contain 456 in some order. And then similarly, box C will contain 123. So this means that once we choose a box A or B to put 789, this is going to uniquely determine the number of ways we can uh, place the numbers in row two without regards to ordering. And so the number of ways to accomplish case one is simply two, just two. Now remember that um, remember that I said we didn't care about ordering in each of the six rows in the boxes. And so we're going to take the ordering into account um, next. Now, why is the answer two? Because we still have to determine the remaining entries. So the reason why it's two is because once I pick a box A or B to put seven, eight, nine, this is going to determine the rest of the rows up to the ordering of the numbers in each row. So this gives two possible ways up to the ordering of the three numbers in each row, in each box. So that will take care of case one. Now case two is a bit trickier. So for case two, we want one of boxes A or B to contain two of the numbers seven, eight, nine on row two. For example, box A contains seven and eight, box B contains nine. So how do we enumerate this? So the idea here is we're just going to figure out what needs to be decided in order to count the number of ways. So for example, we need to choose which of the numbers seven, eight, or nine gets to be the odd number out. In this example, the number nine is the odd number out because only the number nine appears in box B. So there are three ways to choose one of the numbers seven, eight, or nine to be the odd number out among box A and B. We also need to multiply by two because there are two ways or two boxes that we can place this odd number in. We can either place nine in box A or box B. Once we've done that, I need to select one number that goes with the seven and the eight, or more generally one number to go along with the two numbers that are that were chosen among seven, eight, nine, which I indicated with a question mark. Now this question mark cannot be one, two, three, cannot be seven, eight, nine. It has to be one of the numbers four, five, and six. There are three ways to do that. Just for example, let's say that I chose four. Now out of the two remaining numbers in either box A or box B, these two numbers with the question mark, they have to be chosen out of one, two, three in this example. I have to choose two of them. 
And so the number of ways to do that is going to be uh, three choose two, which is three. Let's say those numbers were one and two. Now it turns out once I've done this, um, these actions will uniquely determine the rest of the rows in each box. And so I'll leave it to you to check that. This means that the number of ways where case two applies is three times two times three times three choose two is 54. Now, again, this does not account for the ordering of the three box, the three squares in each uh, box, in each row. So this means that the total number of ways, assuming the top row is one through nine, so the number of ways is going to be 56, which is two plus 54. And then now we need to multiply by three factorial to the six to account for the ordering. And then multiply by nine factorial to account for the first row numbers. And this is going to be the total number of ways uh, to fill in the numbers. The prime factorization of this number is 2 to the 16 times 3 to the 10 times 5 to the first times 7 squared. And the problem asks for uh, PA plus QB plus RC plus SD. So once we extract the answer, we're going to get 2 times 16 plus 3 times 10 plus 5 times 1 plus 7 times 2. This is equal to 81.